and welcome to The Contenders. I'm your host, Peg Young. Well, it is time to prepare our households for the winter weather, uh, take out our parkas from the closet, and we've got to prepare our cars for the chilly weather too. Uh, check the antifreeze, and also give it maybe 30 seconds after ignition for our engines to warm up. Well, the chilly weather is actually boosting the energy level on our studio today. Let's welcome today's contenders onto our stage. <laughs> Welcome to our studio. We have the Cheers team, Park sang and Kim Yura. Welcome and tell us a bit about yourselves. Uh, hello everyone. We are from Korea University and we're graduating next February. Uh, Yura and I became good friends in London when we were studying as exchange students. And we thought it was interesting how the British people said cheers instead of thank you. So that's how our team name became Cheers. We'll do our best and cheers everyone. <laughs> thank you very much for joining us and good luck to you today. Against our cheers team, we have a father and daughter combination, Kim Chi team, Kim Wan Young and Kim Min Young. Welcome and tell us a bit about yourselves. Yes, we are the uh, father and daughter team, and we were looking for opportunity to bond with my daughter, and we thought the uh, contender would be a perfect game show to bond and spend some quality time. Great. Well, we're glad you could enjoy. Uh, uh, being with us, actually, as you share your quality time. Good luck to all of you today. Let us begin our quiz. In our first section, we give you 10 multiple choice questions. We give you the sum of points up to the point where you get a question wrong. If you get all 10 correct, we give you 50 bonus points. And you can use chance once. That means we'll take away two of the incorrect choices and make it easy on you. Cheers. You get to choose first. Q, U, I, or Z sets. Q, please. All right. Questions at Q, number one. Of the following, which fruit does not need to be peeled? One, watermelon. Two, orange. Three, strawberry. Four, grape. Three, strawberry. <laughs> Question two. Of the following, which animal does not lay eggs? One, snail. Two, tortoise. Three, penguin. Four, seal. If you're not sure, you can use chance. Uh, four, seal. <laughs> you know, even if you know the answer before you go into the game, you know, the lights and everything, we kind of throw you off balance a little bit, make you think. We go to question three. <laughs> Of the following, which is not in gas form at room temperature? One, CO2, two, NH3, three, O2, four, NaCl. Four, NaCl. <laughs> and now you haven't used chance yet, we go into question four. Of the following, by what length of a brown tube do you measure the size of a TV? One, width, two, height, three, diagonal, four, width plus height divided by two. Um, three, Answer, diagonal. Very good. And we're almost halfway through. We go to question five. Which art form has appeared in almost every culture throughout history? One, fresco, two, collage, three, sculpture, four, oil painting. Uh, we'd like to use chance, please. All right, we will take away two of the incorrect choices. And cheers, please make your final selection. Number three, sculpture. <laughs> and we go to question six. What sport had to be made more acceptable to civilized people by the introduction of the so-called Queensbury rules? One, angling, two, boxing, three, fox hunting, and four, wrestling. Final answer, please, cheers, team. Uh, number two, boxing. <laughs> That's a great guess. I guess you guys aren't 
really into boxing? No, no not at all. Really. <laughs> Just a guess? Mm -hmm. yeah. Pretty good guess. Thank and you. And we go to question seven. The Great Pyramid of Giza was built for which Egyptian ruler? One, King Tut, two, Cheops, three, ha Hepshetsut, and four, Ramses, two. Three, Hepsis? Hepsis. <laughs> Actually, it is Cheops for whom it was built. You end the section with 60 points. Kim Chi, it is your turn. You have a choice of sets, U, I, or Z. Which Zebra. would you like? Hmm? Z. All right, we will go with questions at Z. Number one. Of the following, which character is not an animal? One, Mickey Mouse. Two, Mashimaro. Three, Snow White. Four, Hello Kitty. Number three, Snow White. Question number two. Of the following, in what does the sports term FA, especially used in professional baseball, mean? One, field or area. Two, free agency. Three, free agent. Four, fast athlete. Number three, free agent. Mm -hmm. Question three. Of the following, how many parallel lines are found on one staff of music? One, five, two, six, three, seven, four, eight. Five, number one. You're whizzing along there, doing a great job. Are you nervous at all? Very. <laughs> you don't look it at all. And we go to question four. Of the following, which is not a film that has had one or more sequels? One, Matrix. Two, Superman. Three, Batman. Four, Daredevil. Four, Daredevil. Did you actually view Daredevil, the Ben Affleck movie? I think that was the dumbest movie I've seen. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. Well, hence we don't have the sequels, right? <laughs> and we go to question five. How many countries border Monaco? One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. We'll take a chance. All right, we'll make things easier for you by taking away two of the incorrect choices. And now, Kim Chi, please make your final selection. We're gonna guess number one. That's correct. <laughs> three sides are bound by France, and that was a great guess on your part. Then we go to question six. What color flag is waved to indicate caution in motor racing? One, red, two, orange, three, yellow, four, black and white. Three, yellow. Uh, do you guys make a family event of watching racing or? No. Not at all. <laughs> Unless it's on TV, we don't. <laughs> Sometimes, though, you do watch it together. Yes. Hmm. Do you have a favorite driver? No. No. Question seven. What is the main religion in Bangladesh? One, Hindu. Two, Buddhism. Three, Muslim. Four, Christianity. We're going to guess Muslim, number three. Right. Muslims make up the majority, 89% uh, of the people there uh, are Muslim. And Kim Chi, you're doing a great job. We go to question eight. Of the following, which organ of the body is topped by an adrenal gland? One, lung, two, heart, three, kidney, four, liver. Uh, we're gonna guess for liver, liver. Actually, it is the kidney, but you did a great job. You end this section ahead, Kim Chi. Congratulations.
And now we get to test how well you guys work together as a team. We give you 20 words in a pre-chosen category. You have 100 seconds to go through the entire list. Please do not use the word or phrase that we give you on the board. And cheers, if you're ready, please take your position. <laughs> and your category is flowers. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite flower? Uh, rose. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, many kinds. Are you ready? Yes. Go. Four letters, red, common flower. Rose. Dead yellow flower. Sunflower. P for a Netherlands flower. Tulip. P, leaf of a flower. Petal. My favorite vegetable, green. It looks like cabbage. We cooked it often in London. Broccoli. Your favorite tea. Well, your English name used to be this. Jasmine. Four letters, D, uh, Donald Duck's nephew, uh, me. Daisy. L, um, spring flower, not the one we mentioned. Five letters. L. Pass. C, thank you, flower. Carnation. Pass. It's a, mu uh, it's a movie uh, with Kevin Mr. Spacey. Flower? Kevin Spacey and this beautiful girl. American... American... It's also a name for uh, something and the beast. American Beauty. This, this painter um, drew water li lilies. M, five letters. Monet. This flower wakes up every morning. M, two morning words. Morning Glory. Uh, o, oh, we raise uh, apple trees in this place. O, six letters. Six letters. O. Oh. Path. Japan's national flower. Cherry blossom. Pass. B. Long letter. <laughs> Cheers, you did a great job. Uh, we couldn't give you credit for sunflower mm -hmm. or uh, morning glory because you mentioned parts Very of the hint, right. actually parts of the word that we give you, gave you on the board as part of your hint. And um, we weren't going for orchard, actually. It was orchid, a kind of flower. Oh, uh, great. Yes. <laughs> but you end the section with 160 points. Good job. And now, Kim Chi, it is your turn. And your category is called Behind Broadcasting. And are you into broadcasting? Not really. Not really. You're just on camera right now, right? <laughs> are you ready? Go. Starts with the C. You use it to videotape the thing. C. Camera. Starts with the A, you use it for a boat to stop the boat. Silver metal. Pass. Pass. This is, starts with the S, this whole thing. Is Set. Up. Six letters. Stage. Pass. Pass. You listen to it, starts with the R, has music. Record. Five letters. Say Turn it on, it has FM, AM. Radio. The, it starts with a P, the person who helps with the... Producer. It's a mistake, Korean, N. Starts with N. N? Two letters. No? No, it's blooper, but Korean. Say it louder. Blooper, it's Korean blooper. NG. Pass. It's up in the air in the space. To get wind. Satellite. Pass. Pass. This is what? Stage, game show. This is what kind of show is it? What is the name of Quiz the show? show? The whole show. Contender? The, the channel. Arirang? Black. TV. It's the thing with all the talking, writing, what you have to say. It starts with the S. Screenwriter? No. Stage? No, it's where you, it talks about the dialogue. <laughs> yeah, script was what we were going for in uh, the last one. Um, 
And you gave the e actual physical thing that you know helps the boat to stop, but we would have gone for the person who delivers news as well, anchor. You end the section with 130 points. Cheers, you are ahead with 160. <laughs> now let's welcome Mr. David Huang with the questions. Yes, uh, as you guys were pointing out, we do use the buzzer in this section. And yes. well, how did you see this game so far? Well, it's a good game. It's a good game. Uh, the, the score is close, but cheers. I am so sorry, mm -hmm. but I'm I gotta root for kimchi because I'm a big family guy. I, I'm a new guy here, and mm -hmm. I don't know if there's been a father and you know child combination here before. This but this is the first. This is the first, mm -hmm. really. Well, I think it's just awesome to see that. So for that reason, I'm kind of. I think kimchi, okay? All right. Thank you. Okay. Hey, we've got to be partial here. Okay, well, just you know uh, what no, I'm No, impartial here. Impartial. <laughs> yes, impartial. we've got to be impartial here. I'm sorry. I am when I read the questions, but just in my heart, okay? Is that enough? In your heart? Yes. Okay, we're, we're aiming for impartial on the stage. All right, on the stage. Well, I'll all do right. that, all right? Anyways, this next series, this next round is a series of non-multiple choice questions. The first team to buzz in will get the first chance to answer. If that team gets it wrong, that chance will be given to the other team. Now, you guys are lucky here on the contenders. Why do you ask? Because if you guys both get it wrong or neither of you guys know the answer, we'll give you the help of a spelling hint to answer it. There's 15 questions in all, 30 points per question, and five seconds to answer each one. Okay? And since we're using the buzzer, uh, please wait for me to call out your team name before sharing your answer with us. So, let's go with question number one. Question number one is about health. An active compound in the herb blank appears to inhibit the growth of human colorectal cancer cells, U.S. Re researchers said, citing preliminary experiments in mice. The herb has long been reputed to have medicinal... Kimchi. Garlic? Mm. Cheers, it's your chance to answer. He'll finish the question. The herb has long been reputed to have medicinal properties. In India, blank tea is touted as a remedy for the common cold. It is also used as a spice, flavoring food. Its spice has a slightly spicy and bitter taste. What is this? Cheers, five seconds. Cheers. Curry? Oh. Hmm. Why don't we take a look at the spelling hint? That makes things easier for you. Cheers. Ginger? Yes, it is ginger that we're looking for. So it's not only flagrant, uh, fragrant and tasty, it's actually helpful to maintain health. Do you like ginger? Um, I like the ginger tea, but not itself. Really? It's kind of very spicy, yes. isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, and we go to question number two. Question number two is about magazine. This magazine, which reaches its half-century anniversary in Janu January, has a new formula. There are more lifestyle and fashion features, the ethnic background of its playmates has been brought in, and there will be more pictures of celebrities, tastefully topless, but with their modesty preserved. Kimchi. Playboy? Yes. I'm so sorry. They want equality family time together, but we're talking about Playboy magazines. Okay. Mm -hmm. Founded by Hugh Hefner, and it's going to have changes. Kimchi, it's good to see you on the board. You're 160, trailing by 30 points. Cheers is leading with 190. However, we have 30 points per question, so it's a very close game. Whoever wins gets to go against our previous winner, the Ed and G team. So let's have our next question. Question number three is about history. An ancient Egyptian mummy, thought to be that of blank the first, has returned home after more than 140 years in North American museums. Blank the first ruled for just two years, but is renowned for founding the 19th dynasty. Kimchi. Ramses. Mm -hmm. And with that, you have tied the score at 190 points, and we go to question four. Question four is about entertainment. Last month, this person had his first taste of solid food since ending his 44-day starvation stunt, doctors have said. He, who began his career as a street uh, magician, staged the public endurance test to push his body and mind to the limit, he said. 
About 250,000 people visit him at the box near Tower Bridge in London. Who is this American magician? This American magician, and why don't we take a look at the hint? It's in there. It's, you know, tip of your tongue. He's been in the news. Five seconds, both teams. Think about it, take a, take a guess. Hmm. Actually, we were going for David Blaine. Mm -hmm. David Blaine is the guy who actually pulled off this 44-day thing. It reduced his weight by something like 50 kilograms. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. And it's amazing that he survived, you know? We go to question number five now. Question number five is about film. In a netizen survey conducted by a Korean portal site, this movie was number one among favorite top ten movies of Koreans. It was directed by Giuseppe Tor Tornatore, and it is about the friendship between the boy Toto, who loves movies, and the theater projectionist Alfredo. What is this Italian and French film? Cheers. Cinema Paradise? Paradise Cinema? What is it? Kimchi, five seconds. I'm going to open it up to both teams. Let's look at the hint. Cheers. Cinema Paradiso. <laughs> you know the film, but you're translating yeah. from Korean. <laughs> yes, that happens sometimes. We go to question five. Qu question six, actually, right? Oh, six. I'm sorry. It's yes. OK. Question six. All right. You're forgiven. And question six is about city. According to Economist magazine, despite the usage of the euro currency of the EU, the difference in consumer prices in member countries still exists. This city has the cheapest prices among euro-using countries, and the prices there are cheaper by 10% than in Paris, the most expensive city. It is the capital of Spain and a national center of arts. Cheers. Madrid. Mm -hmm. Madrid. And Cheers, have you ever been to Madrid? Yes, we have. Actually, oh, you traveled together? Yes, yes, we did. Ah, well, was it beautiful? Oh, it's gorgeous. And was it cheaper? Could you feel the difference? It was Actually, okay. Actually, you were there it before okay. the Euro, right? <laughs> no, we went there just um, last uh, May. May, yeah, ah, it's like a few so months ago. Was, yeah, they were using Euros, but mm -hmm. yeah, I can tell that it was a bit expensive than Paris. Oh, uh, it's no, cheaper. Cheaper. I mean, <laughs> cheaper. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So Spain, yeah. Wa Madrid was a little cheaper than Paris. Yes. Mm. So you can feel it. And now let's move on to our next question. Feel it. Number seven is about word. The earliest ancestors of this flourished in ancient Greece. Bald-headed, padded buffoons who performed as secondary figures in farces and mime parodying the actions of more serious characters and sometimes pelting the spectators with nuts. What is this familiar comic character of pantomimes and circuses? We find these characters at circuses, comic characters. They're funny. Let's look at the hint. Kimchi. Clowns? Yeah, so easy. You pause. <laughs> and so let's go on to question number 10. Shall we? Question number 10 is about space. Large quantities of a green mineral gemstone have been found on this planet. On Earth, the mineral is known as perido, an inexpensive gemstone in jewelry. Uh, it is seen as good evidence that the cold, inhospitable planet was once warm and wet like the Earth. What is this planet also known as the red planet? Cheers. Mars. And kimchi, well, it's good sportsmanship to encourage them, but really, you want to keep your answers to yourself before I call on you, okay? All right, let's go on to question number 11. Question number 11 is about title. The story begins with the flight of 10 young people from plague-stricken Florence in 1348. Blank, or 10 days work, the, story, the stories thus amount to 100 in all. Each of the days, moreover, ends with the canzone, which is a song for dancing, sung by one of the storytellers. And these canzoni include some of Boccaccio's finest lyric poetry. 
What is this? Let's take a look at the hint. Think about this. This is ten days work. Cheers. The Decameron. Decameron. Yeah, the Decameron. We've talked about Boccaccio's work before. Good job. And now let's go on to question number 12. Question number 12 is about survey. According to a recent research by an American insurance company, people with this job are the most violent drivers. According to the data, the order of the most automobile accidents causers, accident causers, descended from blanks, doctors, lawyers, architects, and real estate people. It is somebody who is studying at a school, college, or university. What is this? Kimchi. Student? Yeah. <laughs> Students cause the most accidents. And what's interesting is doctors follow them. So let's move on to our next question. It probably has something, something to do with experience and maturity. You have less experience driving, just kind of cause. Probably something logical like that, mm -hmm. I figure. All right, question number 13 is about person. A Korean proverb says that tigers leave behind their skin and people leave behind their name after they die. For the third consecutive year, this person topped the Forbes list of top earning dead celebrities. He checked in at 40. Cheers. Elvis Presley. The king of rock and roll is here. Going for. Do you like Elvis? I like his songs, but I don't. I wasn't his generation, so I'm not exactly a big fan of him. Hmm. Okay. Do you have a favorite song? Um, Love Me Tender. Yeah. <laughs> Love Me Tender. Probably. Oh. Hmm. And let's go on to question 14 now. Number 14 is about country. The Interparliamentary Union announced that this country had the highest rate of women members of Congress. The percentage of women members of Congress is 48.8%. And it is followed by Sweden, Denmark, and Finland. In the 1990s, it went through a long dispute with its native Hattus and its minority Tutsis. What is this African country? Cheers. Luanda. The Hutus and Tutsis had their dispute there, and it's in the news a lot, actually. And we go to our last question of the section. Our last question is about crop. Last month, a scientist found the oldest known domesticated this. The handful of 15,000-year-old burnt grains was discovered by archeolo archaeologists in Korea. Their age challenges the accepted view that blank cultivation originated in China about 12,000 years ago. Today, this is the primary food for over half- Cheers. Rice. <laughs> And with that cheers team, you get to go into the finals. Congratulations. <laughs> and as my partner put it, Kimchi, it was great having you on. You are our first father and daughter combination. Uh, it was great having you. Um, what do you want to say? Well, thank you for having us. And mm -hmm. I'd uh, like to thank my daughter for last minute substitute for my son. And she only had three days notice to show up. And she saved me. So after I bought her, her cell phone, so I'm <laughs> grateful for her that she Smart came to show for me. And uh, thank you for having us. Thank you for joining us. I hope you had a good time. <laughs> and now, cheers team. You get to go against our last week winner, the Ed and G team. How do you feel about that? <laughs> Well, um, this is pretty unexpected, expected, but we're very grateful that we made up to here and we'll still do our best on the next stage. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Well, we'll be right back with a cheers team after this. Welcome back, the Ed and G team. <laughs> it's
it's good to have you guys back here, Edward Pion and Ernst Stielerbrug. You have improved over the past week. Very good. <laughs> well, you have one win under your belt, so how do you feel? I feel good. I'm sure Ernst does too. We'll try our hard again, our best again this week. All right. Well, good luck to all of you as we get to our quiz. Final section, we give you five categories of questions, five questions each, 10 to 50 points. You don't have to choose them in order. You have to get the first question correct to get the, uh, actually, the right to choose the second question. What are categories for today? The categories are Animal World, On Books, Words, Time to Retire, and Global Trivia. Mm-hmm. All fun, but I get to choose the first one. I will go with Animal World, 10 points. This animal was originally a small animal, incapable of carrying a rider for long periods. Then, the larger domesticated this, Ed and G. Horse. I would have made it really easy for you later on with our hint. Uh, it can be grouped into light, heavy, and pony. <laughs> <laughs> and Ed and G, you get to choose. Uh, on books for 10, please. On books, 10 points. This person wrote 40 books. He was, uh, he first was written during, his first was written, I'm sorry, his first was written during his senior year at Harvard University, uh, the Naval War of 1812. He had a long and varied career. He headed the New York City Police Board and was a Spanish-American war hero, governor of New York State, big game hunter, explorer, and conservationist. He was... Ed and G. Theodore Roosevelt. Yes. He was also the 26th president of the U.S., 1901 to 1909. He was the president and Ed and G, you get to choose. Um, words for 10, please. Words, 10 points. In the Middle Ages, this word meant a place of shelter and rest for travelers, and later, a charitable institution providing for orphans, the aged, and the infirm. This early meaning survives in our words, hostel, and hotel. Today, thank Cheers. Hospital? Hospital. <laughs> Hospital. Hospital. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're going for the French, l'hôpital, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's good, good to see you on the board. <laughs> and you get to choose. <laughs> Words, for 20. Mm -hmm. Words for 20, please. Words, 20 points. This word didn't come into being until around 1300. Until then, the largest number word was myriad, which was Greek for blank. Archimedes, in calculating the number of poppy seeds in the entire universe as he knew it, used expressions meaning myriads of myriads of myriads. Ed and G. Infinity. Mm. Uh, cheers, it's your chance to answer. I'll finish the question. This word means a thousand thousand, or 10 to the sixth power, and often used in the plural, a very large number. What is this word? Cheers, 10, uh, five seconds. Cheers. Million. It's rooted in the 14th century via French from the obsolete Italian milione. Literally, uh, literary means, uh, it means great thousand, and from Latin, mille, or thousand. And cheers, you've taken the lead. 30 versus Ed and G's 20. It's a very close game still. Let's see what you choose. 30 for words, please. Words, 30 points. Philologically, this word is as meaningless as a child's first goo. Terse, abrupt to the point of rudeness, literally bitten off by firm and unyielding consonants at both ends, it snaps like a camera shutter in your face. This is a trademark for a handheld camera invented by George Eastman in 1888 and for photographic supplies such as film. What is this word? Eastman blank. A word Cameras. that means nothing but has this funny sound. Ed and G. Kodak? Yeah. <laughs> and Ed and G, you've taken the lead. You get to choose. Where do you want to go? Time to, re time to retire for 10. Time to retire, 10 points. This will no longer fly, but will be visible in museums. British Airways. Cheers. Concord. Hmm. Was your trip to Europe uh, 
early enough so that you took the Concorde? No. 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 Never flew the Concorde. You know how expensive <laughs> that is? I think, I've, I think I read that it was $15,000 uh, per, per flight. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's a, I think well, it makes it from London to New York in a, like four hours. Mm -hmm. right. But that's pretty expensive. expensive. Yeah. Well, you First know, they might have that's true. sprung for it, right? That's true, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and cheers, you get to choose. 20, time to retire, please. Okay, time to retire for 20 points. This person is 68 years old and has announced that he will retire in 2005. He has released the solo pop album that his label has so long wanted. The all-Italian language Ti Adoro hits, hits U.S. stores in September. He said that he planned to become a teacher, teaching for free, to pass on his experience to aspiring singers. When he... Ed and G. Pavarotti? Pavarotti? Yes. Yeah. Ed and G. He's going to give farewell concerts all over before retiring the stage in 2005. He's a great singer. Have you seen him? Uh, yeah, I have. Mm -hmm. You know that um, he had no formal training originally. Mm. That when he started singing, he started singing like the way he sings. Can you believe that? That's amazing. You know, it really, really is. God-given talent, I guess. Is Definitely. Apparent. And Ed and G, you get to choose. Whatever you want. Uh, time to retire for 30. Time to retire, 30 points. Last month, this person may not have won his final major league start, but in battling back to give the New York Yankees a chance over the Florida Marlins. Ed and G. Roger Clemens. Until now, only one Hall of Fame pitcher finished his career in the World Series, Sandy Koufax, in 1966. So that was a record. Six Cy Young's 19-year career. I mean... The guy is incredible because I think of that because a lot of people have a lot of talent and they play the sport well, but you know, marring it without you know, they get injured and a lot of a lot of times it cuts their career short. But for Roger Clemens, the greatness about him is that he's been doing it for so long. Mm -hmm. Great for a period of time. Yeah. And cheers! I'd like for you to buzz in quickly to go against the Ed and G team. Ed and G, you get to choose. On books for twenty, please. On books, twenty points. The world's first and most comprehensive this was three volumes. The Nuremberg Chronicle published in 1493. Its sole author was Harman Schedel, a physician who had a passion for collecting books and copying manuscripts. Though published late in 1493, it did not contain the most monumentous news of the preceding year, Columbus's historic voyage. Well-known these are Britannica and... Cheers! Encyclopedia. And the ink carta, very famous. Choose, it's good to see you on the board and you get to choose. Uh, on books for 30, please. On books, 30 points. This symbol was computer calculated to a million decimal places in 1973 by the French mathematician Jean. Ed and G. Pi. So this is just a number and it's took 400 pages for this pi. Hmm. And we just go by 3.14, right? And Ed and G, you get to choose. Uh, global trivia for 10, please. Global trivia, 10 points. Hello to everyone at the Contenders. I'm An Cha Ki from Arirang News. In my job as news anchor, I come across a flood of new information every day. Now, there's no way to digest everything, but with a program like The Contenders, I'm sure you'll have some fun while you learn new things. So let's get started. According to a history buff, the bones of blank may have been dug up in the mid-18th century. Author Richard Rutherford Moore, who published two books about this person, bases the claim on research and a series of experiments using a bow and arrow. Legend says the ailing outlaw determined his own burial site by shooting an arrow from his deathbed. Who is this legendary outlaw hero in Sherwood Forest? Hero, Ed and G. Robin Hood. <laughs> oh, we know Robin Hood and Little John. It's the last hint that you've got to wait right, for, actually, right? And Ed and G, you get to choose. Uh, global trivia for 20. Global trivia, 20 points. 
Recently, doctors have, for the first time, successfully used this product to treat patients. The product is a powder which can be stored for years. It is made from donated supplies which normally has a shelf life of just 42 days. The powder can be mixed into liquid form when needed and used immediately on any patient. What is this product? Ed and G. Cheers. Five seconds. Cheers. Uh, iron? <laughs> hmm. Well, if you didn't read it... Can we buzz in again? Surely, I'll give you a chance. Ed and G. Uh, red blood cells? Cheers, five seconds. Cheers. Hemoglobin? Okay, I'm just going to give you the final answer. We're looking for artificial or synthetic blood. They've created an artificial or synthetic blood powder that you can mix up. And what's incredible about it is that you don't have to go by type. See? It's amazing. It is really and incredible. Yeah. It saves and lives. It's better than real blood in that it can actually transport oxygen better than the real thing so that it limits damage to your body because, you know, when we do, don't get oxygen to part body parts, they die off. So it's an amazing thing. Anyway, I'll choose the next one. We'll go with Animal World 20 points. To the Romans, this was Camelopardala. Sorry. <laughs> to the Romans, this was Camelopardalis, spotted camel, a term that survived in English as camelopard. This animal's blood pressure is two to three times that of a healthy man and may be the highest in the world. Its heart needs tremendous force to pump blood through its carotid artery to its brain because of the animal's long neck. Which ranges at and G. Giraffe. You know, I went to the zoo in mm -hmm. Korea and uh, there was giraffes there. They're so cute. <laughs> you ever see their face? They're so pretty. They have like long, long eyelashes and they blink at you. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. And they actually have necks ranging 10 to 12 feet. So you've wow. got to have tremendous force to pump that blood up to the brain. And cheers, I've got to encourage you. You've got to take the chance to go against the Ed and G team. They've won before, meaning they're used to our questions, and so you've got to take the risk. And Ed and G, you get to choose. On books for 40, please. On books for 40 points. The author of this book was paid $209. The writer himself said of it, insight such as this falls to one's lot, but once in a lifetime. Nevertheless, eight years were to pass before the entire first printing, 600 copies, had been sold. The work has been reprinted many times in many countries. What is this, the major work of Sigmund Freud, Austrian neurologist and founder of psychoanalysis? The major work. Hmm. The Freud is known for bringing up the importance of certain things. Cheers. Interpretation on dreams. Interpretation. Ed G, five seconds. Ed and G. Um, the interpretation of dreams. Yes. The trans the tune is something that we would have taken as well. Ed and G, you get to choose. Global trivia for thirty. Global Trivia, 30 points. This organization has an essential role to play in Iraq while the country is under occupation. One of its main functions is monitoring the treatment of detainees. But the organization has said it will reduce its foreign staff in Iraq. Cheers. Red Cross. Yes, it is the International Committee of the Red Cross, or ICRC. Formed in response to the experiences of its founder, Jean-Henri Dunant. And it's good to see you on the board. Cheers, you get to choose. Uh, 40 for words, please. Words, 40 points. This word comes from Greek, and it means, I smell. German chemist Sean Bein thought the smell of electricity produced in the laboratory by passing dry air between two plate electrodes connected to and alternating a current of several thousand volts was somewhat like chlorine. Thinking he had a chlorine-like substance in co combination with other elements, he coined 
this word in 1840? What is this gaseous form of oxygen? It has a smell produced in the lab by passing dry air between two plate electrodes connected to a candle. Cheers. Ozone. Yes, it is the ozone. Its name is from the Greek, ozone. And cheers, you get to choose. Animal world for 30 points, please. Animal world, 30 points. The camel originated in this region. Before it became extinct there, groups migrated to Asia and to South America. The Asian group currently includes the single-humped Arabian camel and the two-humped camel of Central Asia. The South American group includes the wild guanaco and the domesticated alpaca. The region is third in size among the world continents. And, cheers. China. Ed and G, it's your chance to answer. I'll finish the question. And is bounded on the north by the Arctic Ocean. What is this? Ed and G, five seconds. Ed and G. Uh, North America. Yeah. And Ed and G, you get to choose. Uh, time to retire for 40, please. Time to retire, 40 points. This person announced he is quitting international football after next summer's Euro 2004 tournament in Portugal. The FIFA World Player of the Year in 2001... Ed and G. Luis Figo. He is Real Madrid's uh, Portuguese midfielder. When he was here in in Korea for the World Cup and when Korea played, he definitely didn't look like his old self. Mm. He, was a, he played a lot slower, seriously, you know? Mm. So, anyway, he had a marvelous career, no doubt about it, but... <laughs> He's still one of the best players, though. Is he still making those plays? Yeah, I mean, one uh, of my not favorites. As, not as he used to, though. It's of a little course, different. Defi it's definitely visible. He can still work up to the level of Real Madrid, where he's still playing. Mm -hmm. I see. So we've got a big fan here. Yeah. <laughs> you get to I'm choose. a fan too, though. He, I mean, he was good. There's no doubt about <laughs> Definitely. it. Definitely. <laughs> you get to choose. <laughs> Global trivia for 40. Global trivia, 40 points. The ice covering the Arctic Ocean is getting thinner as summers lengthen, according to British scientists. It puts the habitat of this animal, which relies on the ice to hunt for seals and other foods. Ed and G. Polar bear. <laughs> Of course, this change, we would have also taken white bear, water bear, sea bear, ice bear. That's <laughs> the right answer. And this also has ramifications on global warming. We feel it as an effect. And that NG, you get to choose. Um, time to retire for 50. Time to retire, 50 points. Loved and loathed, but rarely ignored, this person left behind a complex legacy when he retired on October 31st. He is seen by some in the West as a Muslim bigot. But for 22 years, he has run a moderate, multi-racial, multi-religious country. He is a sharp critic. Cheers. Mahathir. <laughs> Mahathir Mohamed. Former Malaysian Prime Minister. And cheers, you get to choose. Um, global tribute. Mm, sorry. Words for 50, please. Words, 50 points. Various ancient people speaking a group of related languages were described in the Bible as having descended from blank, one of the sons of Noah. The German historian August Ludwig von Strosser suggested in 1781 that these languages be called this. It is a group of languages belonging to the Afro-Asiatic family and spoken in North Africa and Southwestern Asia, including Hebrew, Arabic, Aramaic, Maltese, among others. What is this? These languages should be called this after a son of Noah. Okay. Cheers. I'll tie. Ed and G, five seconds. Ay, ay, ay.
We're looking for Semitic. Oh. Semitic, you know? Yeah. If you know oh. the three, the, do you guys know the sons of Noah, by the way? <laughs> Just, give us a lesson. I'll give you a lesson. There, he, Noah had three sons. Ham, Japheth, and Shem. And from Shem is a line, the Semitic line. Mm -hmm. So that's... And the Korean language is from the Ural Altaic language, and maybe that's where you, you were looking for the root. Well, it was a tough question. Why don't we go with global trivia, 50 points. This is a new kind of computer in theory that's far more powerful than any that currently exist. It's superior to a normal computer because in addition to the conventional binary digit of ones and zeros for the on and off switches, it can also in theory be in a superposition of states, that is, on and off at the same time, which allows it to encode a lot more information. What is this new computer? Ed and G. Uh, giant. Cheers five seconds. We're looking for quantum computer. Oh. Mm. Wow, we're running up against some tough questions today. We have a choice of two. Why don't we go with Animal World, same category, closing the category 50, 50 points. For more than a century and a half, blank has been victim of a nasty smear, scientists say. Now though, computer scanning of fossilized blank skulls has thrown up a radically different picture of a creature whose highly specialized brain gave it extraordinary control over its wing surfaces, making it so nimble that it could probably outperform modern birds. What is this flying reptile that flourished 251 to 65 million years ago? Ed and G. Pterodactyl. Cheers, five seconds. This is a flying reptile that flourished 251 to 65 million years ago, and Ed and G. Erectus. No. Hmm. Cheers. Five seconds. Pterosaur. Oh no. So close. <laughs> yeah. So so. Well, and now we have just one question left on the board. On books, 50 points. Last question. This person is the most successful textbook writer of all time. His representative work of around 300 BC has gone through more than 1,000 editions since the invention of printing. The phrase, I studied my blank, was for a long time synonymous with I studied geometry. He is the most prominent mathematician of Greco-Roman. Ed and G. Euclid? Yes. <laughs> Euclidean is what we would have also taken. And with that, Ed and G, you win twice in a row. Congratulations. Various prizes are awaiting our winning contenders. Your first win will take you on a trip to Jeju Island. Your second win to Japan. Your third win will take you to China. And on your fourth win, you'll win a trip to Southeast Asia. On your fifth win, a trip to Hawaii. Your sixth win, a trip to the United States. And on your seventh win, you'll take the grand prize of a tour of Europe. We hope many of you join us. This was a pretty tough game for both teams today. Um, cheers. Well, it was great having you on our show. What do you want to say to your supporters? <laughs> it was a great honor to be on this show, and we had really good yeah. fun. And yeah. We were trying to tell these guys to go to Jeju together, but then they didn't <laughs> listen to us, so it's all right. Oh I have fun in Japan. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you again for joining us.
and at NG, it was a pretty tough game, but you came out winners. Well, congratulations. What do you want to say? Well, it was fun having a little young coach on here on stage again, <laughs> Yonsei and Korea University. So we had a lot of fun, <laughs> and uh, we're looking forward to coming back here. All right. Well, congratulations again, Thank and you. we'll see you again next week. Yeah. Another great game. Join us again next week. Bye-bye.